Hey, 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 it's Kurt the Boat Doctor. Beautiful day, tides slowly going out. It's gonna be ebb, I mean, ebb tide, or slack, whatever you wanna call it, I guess. Got them bottom paint, barely sits in the water. That's nice, stable. I rarely do this, but this is a trade shack. So I'm gonna do everything from the start. 924, so I got 934. I'll do like, oh, 10 minute videos on it. But normally I don't do this until I check everything. But I'm just seeing if there's any glitches today. Okay, wash down works. And again, if you hear that, uh, uh, when this is on and you're not using that, that means you got a leak and there's a seacock valve back there you can turn off. And I went through all this. So then what we're gonna do, so I tie this boat off, and before I park that trailer, of course, I'm going to probably go in here and just double check on the bilge. Nothing coming out. You'd hear it coming out if you did. But then what I would do is I'd trim my motor down to there. Then I'd go park my truck. You may even want to start it up just to make sure it fires up before you pull away. Uh, that way, if it gets busy down here, then you run down, everybody's in a hurry, of course. Then you forget to trim the motor down when you fire it up. So that's why I say do that. Now, when you're going up, if you hit that and it goes, eh, and all of a sudden you hear it kind of slow for a second, eh, a different pitch, trim it to there, start the motor. Because that's telling me your battery's weak. So by the time you keep trimming, oh, hey, it's trimming, I got battery power, hey, look at me. And then once you get it all the way down to the bottom, you'll hear it go clunk. There, so it's at the bottom. And of course, if you turn the key on, if these don't come on, that means the battery switch is not on. Then if you get up here, and this is what happens. When you load it up on the trailer, you bring it back, but you don't bring it all the way back. Turn the key. Huh, how come? Okay, point. And then the lanyard, of course, if you didn't have that, it would just crank over, crank over, and not start. But you'll hear this annoying buzz. That first thing, safety lanyard's not plugged in. You just turn it, fires up. 14 hours is all that's on here. And the trim cam sensor from what I see here needs adjusting. And I'm gonna see if I can't get into that real quick. I think it was mode for like one, two, three, four, five. Nope. Then one, two, three, or five. Nope. One, two, three, four, five. No. So they got to manually do that. I was going to see if this was the 14 hours there. Hour. Nope. That's your standard. So they got to adjust that. <coughs> so one, adjust trim cam sensor. Three bars down. Shows. Okay, so that's that. Okay, the main motor is running, so that's good. We know that fires up. Uh, nav light, I didn't see the anchor light in here. Um, so they're going to have to wind, uh, wind that baby up. Horn works, wife works, belt pumps works. Okay, so then I'll fire this thing back up again. Then I'm going to turn these on. This, and then your power key's over here for this. And if I took this boat out, then you hear that beep, 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 beep. Do that right there. There's your latitude and longitude. It's waiting for satellite receptions. You get here. That's your weather right there. You want to scan, just hit that button right there. And it does have, and then stop scan, hit there. I run like on 21 in here. You can go intercom, and there's your AIS right here. So that's pretty cool. Then you can just hit that and go back. So we'll scan. This is loading up. So this one, one of these have got to be for that front light. So what I'm going to do is hit two of these. Yeah, it's that one. Yep, it's working. So now we'll see which one. Yep, so it's this outer one right there. So that's for that LED light up on top. So this is loading. I put some gas, 35 gallons in, just to make sure we got three quarters of a tank. Then we come back here, and I sure already showed you the courtesy lights. Okay, now we're going to get to the kicker. Trim this baby down. Now, I already fired this up, but if this was cold, you'd pull that choke out. This is the friction. 
to keep it locked so it isn't going back and forth. This is your friction for the, your uh, throttle. You would put this here and you'd give it like seven turns, bring it back, bring it up to this indentation, hit the start button. As soon as it starts pushing that choke, bring this down to where it drops idle and then wait. And then when it picks up, drop it down, picks up, drop until you get it all the way down. So then now after you've fired it up and you've been out there a while, bring it about right to there. And then just hit the start button, she'll fire right up. See that? Goes into gear. Then you just kill it right there. You bring this up. Like that, bring the handle up. I always bring that up because sometimes these, see how close that is there? If you leave that handle down, but this is locked out. At least it ain't tie barred in because if it was tie barred in, it could hit this and snap your handle. Now see how he's got this here? That's there for his handle so he can make an extension. I don't know if I'd really use that one too much. Uh, I've seen these break because of the ones they put over the top. But you know, you're putting a lot of pressure on that when you're pulling back and forth. It could weaken this thing up through time. Uh, but I, I know what he's doing. He's using it to shift, you know, back and forth plus steer, which is a good idea. I guess you could, you know, he doesn't have a lot of time on it. Um, but I'd make sure that friction was off so this thing turned as easy as can be. And I'll show you that when I get out in the water. But make sure you tilt that thing back, especially if you had a remote up front. Okay, so then out here, if you look, there's like a bottle cap that comes with this. If not a pop, uh, you know, Pepsi cap, a plastic one would fit on that. Cover that. You don't want water getting into there. There's your GPS antenna, radar. Yeah, and that VHF. You got your running lights. I've already checked those. Those work. Now, here's what's nice about having a cleat right here. So then all I have to do is go back here, loosen this up, pull it in, go over here, loosen that up, pull it in like that. Then I just make a loop like this. Then I come back here and I tie that access so it doesn't go drop in the water. Then I take the bumper, pop it in, Then all you do, then it says right here, accept. There you go. Oh, AIS, perfect. Does that ship over there? Let it go out. Yeah, you got a lot of boats. Let's go. Got 200 kilohertz, that looks good. Clear cursor. There we go. There's our channel. Good, good, good. That's freaking good. Time steer boat to waypoint. That looks good. Okay, so far so good. Okay, I like it. So then what we're gonna do is shut this. You don't have to really latch those. What time do I got? 624 I got two minutes okay so one way to tell you if this is a command link gauge which this is not if you put it in gear hit set one two three release that no T pops up so they got to manually set that and that's easy to do okay I'm gonna stop this it's a 210 2022 with the 200 on it Hughescraft and I'm gonna do part two